Good morning, good evening, and good night to all. This is Reading in Solitude, and I'm your host of Reading in Solitude. Allow me to introduce this story. The story is called Baking with Natsuki, and it's a short story. As I had said, I think in the past, I um, was thinking of doing a short Natsuki story, and I did, actually. It's, it's an old story. And this is uh, the perfect example of a story which has no theme, it has no underlying message. It's really just meant to um, evoke a, a bit of a human experience, and I hope that when I'm reading this to you and when you're listening, you can sort of get take something away from it emotionally, or uh, it, it can bring you back to some sort of past experiences which you've had. It's a happy story, and it's nothing too serious, so without further ado and without anything more to say, let's begin. Baking with Natsuki It was shortly before Valentine's Day when Natsuki and I got together to bake cookies in the evening. She and I had found a recipe to follow and were gathering the ingredients to bake it. I sat down with her and looked over the recipe one last time as we got ready to begin baking. Natsuki had really wanted to do something with me before the holiday, and I was eager to oblige. She's such a sweet girl, and I couldn't deny her something so simple that I knew would make a great difference to her. How wonderful is it to be able to spend time with your friends. This would be her first holiday season with a fair home to stay in, and I was glad to be able to offer her that. I know how much she struggled with her old living situation, and I was just glad to be able to give her the gift of a loving household. We all love her deeply, myself and our other housemates. So how are we going to do this? I asked as I looked over towards her. Her short pink hair was adorable, almost as much as the rest of her face as she tried to figure out the recipe. How about this? I'll do the dry ingredients, you cream the butter and sugar. She stated to me as we split the tasks up. I got to it and halved each measurement that I had to take. The butter was easy as the original recipe called for two sticks and thus I only had to put one in. But when it came to the sugar, it was a bit harder. After all, adding three-eighths of a cup was no easy feat when the smallest thing that I had was one-fourth of a cup. Oops, I stated as I realized that I'd used the wrong cup. I added a bit too much sugar. You dummy, you should pay more attention. She pouted as she set down her work. She was almost done adding all the dry ingredients. Hold on, hold on, I stated. I can fix this. I took what I thought to be the excess sugar and poured it into a small bag for later use. There, all better. It better be, if you ruin my cookies, our cookies, I'll take the blame just fine. But then again, if I did ruin them, we could always just do this all over again. I do quite enjoy baking with you. Natsuki blushed and puffed her cheeks before returning to her bowl. She stood over me as I beat the eggs into the cream. She took her bowl of mix and grabbed my hand as she began to slowly add the mix into the bowl. I looked down to her while she was holding firm onto the mixer. I simply allowed her to guide my hand through the mix. Natsuki tried to ignore my gaze for some time before I scooted closer to her. I wanted to show her that being open with our affection was fine. When we were alone, or in the privacy of our room, she had no problem hugging or cuddling with somebody. Not just me, but any of the others. But outside of that privacy, when she was among more than one person, she never liked to show any sort of affection. When we finished mixing, Natsuki went to gather a pan and some parchment to place the batter onto. The sound of the oven's relay switching let me know that it was ready for our cookies. We slid the tray into place and shut the door. Alright then, all we have to do is wait. Natsuki looked to the clock and tried to figure out how much time. I decided it was my perfect chance to surprise her with a hug then and there. I placed my arms under hers and lifted her up to my height, giving her a big hug as she squirmed for a bit. She stopped squirming and then stated, 
If you're gonna hug me, at least let me turn around so I can hug you back. Fair enough. I set her down, at which point she gave me a punch. Ow! I hissed. That's for picking me up. She growled as I rubbed my arm. She then sprang onto me, wrapping her arms around me. And this is a thank you for helping me bake. So that was all for the story. It was, a, like I said, a, a very short story. And that's how I meant it to be. It was not meant to be anything long and arduous or overly meaningful. Some might say that this is completely meaningless, emotional, sentimental crap, but to that I say, I think emotion and love are very important things, and that's really why I write about them so much. You'll notice that most of my stories which I write about have love in them, and it's because for me and in my life, love has been a very important thing, and it's one of the most important things to me. The good friends that I have, the people who I'm with, I love them all very much, and my life would be far less enjoyable without them. My life would be far less complete without love. To any of you out there who are looking at spending Valentine's Day alone, whether that be because you don't want to go out on a date or because you can't find one, I urge you to instead focus your attention to love in general, whether you love your family or you love your friends, or you just have, say, books or stories that you really love. Put your focus into those things. Love is very important. I understand that not all of my listeners are religious, and that's perfectly fine. And I have no qualms with you if you do not believe in God. But there's a wonderful passage from the Bible which talks about love, and if you'll allow me to read it to you, I shall do so. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. And I want you all, again, even if you are not religious, to take in that final line. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. For those of you who find yourselves alone and afraid, one of the greatest things to have is somebody who loves you and somebody who you can love. And I understand that not all of us have the fortune of being able to interact with many people. I myself am a very solitary person. But even just one or two friends, it doesn't have to be romantic. Just the simple love of friendship is so much in comparison to the absence of it. Seek out those who think like yourself, who have common interests, those who share something in common with you. And I pray that you do your best to find love, for love is a wonderful thing. Take care.